Um, Yuichi, the floor is yours. And I should, of course, in the, in the acronym, have mentioned the Quad. But fortunately, Jean-Pierre mentioned the Quad. <laughs> and the Quad was a Japanese initiative. So the floor now is yours. Well, thank you very much indeed uh, for having me in this session. And also, thank you very much for maintaining attention to the Indo-Pacific region, the most dynamic region, as well as the largest region in the world. So that's why we have the largest number of speakers in this session. <laughs> of course, thank you very much for mentioning about Quad. Uh, it's a Japanese invention, as well as a concept to the Indo-Pacific, which is generally regarded as the invention of uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, uh, for some reasons. Uh, Many things have happened in the last one year in the Indo-Pacific region while, while we are seeing two wars. One in Ukraine, of course, and the other one in the Middle East. So we are now asking whether another war would happen soon in Asia-Pacific or Indo-Pacific region, of course, around Taiwan. Uh, so I like to focus on four points in my talk, initial talk. First, the possibility of contingency around Taiwan has been repeatedly discussed in the last one year. Last month, the Chinese government sent the fighter jets to monitor and warn a US a Navy aircraft that flew through the Taiwan Strait. Many observers naturally sensed the possibility of the outbreak of a military conflict between the two parts. In Japan, we have been generally saying that the possibility of war is quite small because China is not Russia. China would be more rational and more restrained. That's why the possibility is limited. But still, we can see some elements of the outbreak of war. So we have to be careful about how we should stop the happening of the war in the region. This is one thing. The other thing is that secondly, on the, on the other hand, both China and the United States have been, have, have been searching opportunities to talk at the highest level. It is now reported that the President Xi Jinping would soon visit San Francisco to attend this year's APIC meeting. Uh, this would be undoubtedly a variable opportunity to ease the tension between the two greatest parts. So this is a good news. Thirdly, Japan, the number three largest economy in the world. <clears throat> Japan decided to double its defense budget uh, uh, to, to, to enhance Japanese deterrence in the region. This is largely because of the fact that the US government has been repeatedly asked Japan to do so. There are so many uncertainties, and the regional powers must take more responsibilities than before. Of course, the United States is becoming much more inward looking. And next year, we do not know who will be chosen as the next president. That's why Japan must play a larger role in stabilizing the region. Thirdly, and, and the for, fourthly, another good important thing is that the Japan and the South Korea have, have been uh, improving their relationship. This is a good news during the time of a great concern and wars. I think that this is essentially important trends for some reason. One of them is that the United States government has been trying to pursue the two governments to improve their relations because U.S. forces in Japan and the U.S. forces in Korea cannot work effectively without the cooperation between the two governments. So the finally, the missing puzzle can be found. I mean, the United States can effectively increase deterrence in the region with much more enhanced ROK-Japan relations. So this is a good news. The US government has been trying to create a cooperation among the like-minded partners, and the Quad is one of them. So at the time when the multilateral cooperation is really difficult, we need to rely more upon the cooperation among like-minded partners as well as minilateral cooperation, minilateralism, which means, of course, AUKUS and the Quad as well as the G7. So these are the cooperation among the like-minded partners. By enlarging that cooperation, I think that we can remedy the so many problems that we are now facing. 
So in the sense, uh, Japan can provide many things to bring stability in the region by enhancing deterrence on one hand. But on the other hand, Japan is providing inclusive regional concepts such as in the Pacific. This is a huge inclusive regional concept based upon the free and the open in the Pacific strategy, which has been driven by Japanese government, and also CPTPP as well, the largest free trade area in the region. So with these inclusive visions, I think that Japan can do something to bring stability in the region. Thank you very much. Uh, interesting that, um, in a sense, America's policy in the region overhangs everything. And one does wonder um, if Donald Trump were to be the next president, uh, how policy might or might not change. Um, I mean, in a sense, Biden has continued much of Trump's policy towards China. Um, but uh, you know, it's interesting you brought up the question uh, of uh, the need for more, for Asian powers to take more responsibility. It's very important.